Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm sitting here with Don Fraley of Advanced Weapons Technology. If you guys have been on the channel, you'll see the video of Don building this uh, custom 1911. Uh, that's what Don does. Don builds custom pistols and custom uh, long range rifles. And he's got a very interesting story. He's been in the business for a long time, about 30 years or so. Yes. Um, it's a well known name, especially in the 1911 and precision rifle market. And uh, Don kind of got out of the business for a little while, and he's been back for about seven years producing super high-quality uh, handguns and rifles. And this is the 1911 that Don built to us that you've seen in the other video. Um, gun has been safety checked and cleared for all the safety Nazis out there. We, we get those guys, but it's a, it's a beautiful gun, and uh, we're going to get into Don's story right here. Sure. This is a uh, tactical frame. I have the light rail on it. Um, this is a 4140 chrome molly steel frame. This is actually a 4140 chrome, uh, chrome molly bar stock slide. It has a 20 line checkering. It has an Ed Brown style magwell that's been fully blended. And in the video that uh, when I was building it, you can see where I actually take a, uh, a strip of memory cloth and I actually blend it all the way down in. It's, it's perfectly smooth and a real smooth transition for the magazine. This is my Raider top end and it's been tri-topped, flattened and serrated, and then we put the lightning holes in it. Um, it uh, speeds the slide up a little bit and it gives it a nice, uh, a nice look as well. Um, it has a um, extreme engineering hammer sear, sear disconnector uh, made out of tool steel. I actually give a lifetime guarantee on these trigger jobs and uh, in the uh, 30 years of uh, building these. Uh, I've never had one of my trigger jobs come back, uh, especially with these uh, light speed uh, products. Uh, so it has a, a three hole lightened uh, trigger and um, a bull barrel that has a deep recess in it. And um, it's in a nine millimeter. It's one of my favorite guns. And if you guys haven't seen the video of us actually building this gun, go check the channel. It should be the uh, second or third video after this one. Um, but yeah, everything he does, like the uh, checkering on it, is all done by hand. You'll see that in the video. Um, you know, this is just a bare slide and frame when we started. So, you know, everything is hand built. Everything, all parts used are U.S. made. It's a great quality pistol. So now we want to kind of talk a little bit about Don himself and how he got into the business, how long he's been doing it, things mm -hmm. like that. He has a pretty interesting story. So what what actually got you into wanting to build? custom handguns and rifles. Don also builds precision long range rifles as well. A little bit of a long story, but um, uh, I was a police officer in a small town called Russell, Kentucky. And um, actually I actually had a friend of mine who was a master sergeant in uh, special forces. Right. And he came down one night, I was working midnight, and he said, you know, I think you might be a good fit for our unit. Uh, and it was a, a special forces reserve unit. Um, so he convinced me to uh, come up uh, I'd been on the department about five years, and he convinced me to come up and take the exam. Uh, it's a pretty extensive uh, exam. It's about a four-hour written and practical exam. Um, and uh, went up and, and took it, and I uh, don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I had the highest uh, recorded score ever in Special Forces on an entrance exam. And uh, they kind of let me write my own ticket for training uh, because uh, I had scored so high, and they had, uh, they had a couple of... Um, of um, slots that's really hard to fill. One of them is, is commo, communications, and the other one were, uh, uh, was combat medic. Right. So they really wanted a combat medic because they're so hard to get through that school. Uh, so I took a leave of absence from the police department and went in special forces and uh, went through the training and so forth. And uh, uh, I, I did real well. I loved the military. I uh, graduated as the highest uh, scoring soldier ever to leave Fort Jackson and uh, I actually scored a perfect score on all oral written and practical exam and they wanted to immediately send me to the uh, officers candidate school which I thought was a little fast for me I didn't want to jump into uh, into it that quickly I didn't feel like I knew enough about the military but anyway I went on through my training and uh, went to uh, medic school in San Antonio Texas uh, won the commander's award uh, for uh, uh, being a combat medic there and going through the schooling and uh, came back, spent about another year with the Russell Police Department and the state police actually came and recruited me and uh, wanted to know if I'd be interested in joining the Kentucky State Police and I did 
uh, went through the uh, State Police Academy. So that was the second academy I'd been through, not counting the military, and uh, <clears throat> left there as president of the class. Uh, got my uh, six months under my belt as a, uh, as a new trooper, and um, they put me on the SRT team. During my time with the SRT team, they sent me to uh, Carlos Hathcock, uh, who was teaching uh, sniper, uh, sniper school and uh, he is a, a very renowned uh, uh, legend within the United States Marine Corps. And uh, I felt, felt very fortunate to attend his uh, class and um, actually was top gun coming out of his sniper school. And uh, came back and continued to uh, be the lead sniper on a four county SRT team in Ashland, Kentucky and then was approached by the uh, Department of Energy Nuclear Security uh, Division, and they were curious if I wanted to become um, a part of the nuclear security team. Uh, Don's so, book will be out early so, August. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did that, and uh, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging again, <clears throat> but I love that kind of training. I love that intenseness, and uh, was the uh, honor graduate coming out of nuclear security. During those times with the local department, the state police, and the DOE, I was a part of their pistol and rifle teams that they had. And I got to where I was doing a little bit of my own uh, gunsmithing, reading a lot, studying. Uh, actually got a couple sets of, uh, of uh, vocational school machine shop uh, books and read uh, as, and self-taught myself as much as I could while I was building um, uh, my own pistols. So oddly enough, I sent off to uh, Bill Wilson uh, to have a, uh, a custom compensated 45 made uh, when I was a state trooper. And one of my trooper friends uh, was with me when I got it, and he had had one also. And I looked at that, and I said, I can build one of these. And he laughed at me. He said, you can't do that. And the joke goes, $60,000 worth of machine tools later, I was building guns for him. And this was what year? And this was in 1985, 84 and 85. Um, so then it just kept progressing and uh, now I have a, a full CNC uh, shop and, and uh, uh, tool room grade lathes and, and we're building long range precision tactical rifles and tactical handguns and, and, and modifying and customizing a lot of them. That's all included in the video that we did of the build of the gun. You get to see Don shop, very nice shop, <laughs> uh, well organized. Yeah. So that led to you, and, and you started off building the 1911s and stuff like that first, right? I did the 1911 first, which is a little bit of a complicated gun just to jump in on. But yeah. uh, uh, I just prided myself with, uh, with my work, my hand-cut checkering, because very few people are doing hand-cut checkering uh, today. Uh, but back then, it was, um, it was almost like the um, check in the box. You know what you're doing if you can do hand-cut checkering. Right. So I spent a lot of time... Um, uh, developing that skill and getting those lines just super crisp and super sharp and I actually point them up one at a time as you can see in the video and uh, they just have to be uh, letter perfect and straight. Now there was a period to where you I don't know if you got out entirely <coughs> but where you weren't building firearms I know you were the the mayor of your city and I did. all that kind of stuff too. I, and I did it's, it's kind of a kind of a funny story but I had a I had a gentleman working for me that was just begging me to um, uh, me for me to sell my business to him, and um, I had a, a couple opportunities uh, that presented themselves, and I ended up becoming mayor of the town that I was in. And I went back to school and finished my master's degree in business with an emphasis in healthcare. And oddly enough, um, during that time, um, I had been studying, and I got a master's license in electrical construction and electrical contracting. And the local hospital uh, that was close to me needed somebody with that expertise in their plant facilities management. So I went ahead and sold the business to the gentleman that worked for me. And um, uh, I went to work for the hospital. And then for the next 17 years, I kind of did this, but only did it as a hobby on the side. And um, uh, I ran large medical practices. and. Um, always wanted to come back to this. The gentleman I sold the business to was not very business minded at all and ended up 
reverting the business back to me just uh, a little over a year or so back into it. Right. So I put all the stuff in storage <clears throat> and was doing just a little bit of custom gunsmithing here and there for myself and some friends. And then as I neared retirement <clears throat> out of the uh, healthcare uh, field, I started ramping it back up. And, and now I have a, a fairly large facility uh, with state-of-the-art machines and so forth and doing this full time. And the, the work, you know, you guys will see a separate video of us showing the gun like we normally do mm -hmm. and then uh, us out shooting and testing the gun as well. Everything is top-notch quality. I mean, there's there's no <clears throat> slop in any, any parts of this gun. Everything's done by hand. You guys will see all that. Now, Don's life reads like a, you know, a made-for-TV movie or something. I mean, he's done a lot, uh, as you just heard, throughout his career. I mean, he was the mayor of the city that he lives in for what did he do, two, two terms. terms, and was a uh, the the governor. We had we had done. I had a really good, a really okay. good council, so I can't take all the credit. But we were in debt up to our eyeballs, and um, uh, I just used some practical financial uh, skills that I had learned. And in five years, we were totally out of debt, and was the only city in the state of Kentucky that was debt free. And uh, Governor Ernie Fletcher at the time uh, recognized that and asked me would I step down from being mayor, and he actually appointed me to a commission seat uh, in the county. So uh, I did that for uh, for a couple of years. Um, well, you know, what, one of the things I mentioned to you before when we were actually building the gun is, you know, the firearms industry has become really big and popular. Everybody kind of wants to be involved in it now, and that's that's taken course over the last ten years. <clears throat> And a lot of businesses have sprung up, have sprung up. I mean, and uh, you know, some of these guys have had no background into the industry or, at all. So I find it really cool that you know you've started and have done this and been in this industry in one way, shape, or form your entire life and career. Pretty much. So I mean, and we haven't even gotten into the long-range precision rifles that Don builds, and, and you'll see that too. We'll be doing some videos on that. Don also teaches long-range precision shooting. Uh, we may be taking one of the classes from him in the future as well, and he may actually be building us a rifle, so you guys will get to experience that as well. His rifles are the same way. You know, everything's done by hand in his shop by Don. And one of the beauties, one of the things that we like to emphasize with our sponsors, uh, you guys know we're really picky about people that we choose to let in to what we consider as a family. And Don's a great guy. Uh, all his guns that he builds are, you know, way far and beyond what you can go buy off any shelf. Um, he has the experience. He's lived that life, um, you know, going back to him, actually, you know, studying and training with, Carlos Hathcock and actually leaving there as top sniper is pretty incredible. I mean, thank you. You can't buy, you know, you can't pay enough for this type of quality, really, and and know how that uh, Don's went through. And uh, it's just, you know, from what being there and watching him do it, it's just the highest quality that you know we've seen, and that's something that we pride ourselves on. We don't want to support someone. That number one won't take care of you guys if there is a problem, which Don stands behind everything he does. Um, but it's just his quality control is so high, and if you watch the video, you'll see that. So everything. And how long have you been back in the shop and running um, now? Seven years. So <clears throat> seven years. You got back, took the business back, and mm -hmm. started producing everything again yourself. Yeah. And the other thing is. We, we want to make sure that every part we use is made in the USA. Uh, and I won't mention any of the names because I, I think that's, that, that's not uh, classy. But some of the really big name uh, firearms manufacturers in 1911s, uh, their frames and slides are from the Philippines or from uh, South Korea and some of those places, and we just refuse to do that. Uh, I could get those raw components uh, about $100 cheaper apiece, and I just refuse to do it. It's, just, uh, it's, it's, it's all machine bar stock in our shop. It's a beautiful piece. I mean, as, as you guys can see here, it's just a beautiful weapon. Now, uh, go check out the video of the gun itself, uh, where we'll actually do a shorter video going through um, the entire gun and showing off and telling you guys what exactly has been done. If you like the one that you see here, you can call Don and ask for the T package, which would be the tactical existence package, and you'll get exactly what is done here. 
um, but also Don offers guns by services too. You can start with a blank slide and frame. <coughs> Um, so you can just tell him what you want out of the services that Don does. Um, you don't have to get a tri top. They don't have to have the lightning cuts and stuff like that. You can go bushing, bushingless. Um, but it's just incredible work, and it's an incredible story. And that's kind of why we wanted to do this for you guys, because um, it really does sound like a made-for-TV type movie. You should write a book. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I think I'm but, good where I am. We appreciate you know you coming on board and you're happy to be able to promote Don and his products. Um, Advanced Weapon Technologies is the name of the business. Uh, you'll be able to find a link down in the description here to Don's website and a link to his Facebook and Instagram, which uh, Don just recently started the Instagram and stuff and we're working to get that out to you guys, try to get some nice pictures of uh, some of the products he does uh, for you guys. So, Don, I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks for telling us Thank your story. You. and uh, Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for being a part of it. Okay. Appreciate it. Guys, like always, don't forget to like, share, favorite, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video.